Hi everyone, today we will be looking at the Seymour EA9 HMI series panel object list meters and graphs. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will also be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So I'm going to be using the program that we created last time on our object entry and we will add another page to this and we'll call this page number seven or screen number seven and our screen name here will actually be um, meter and graph and we can put a description here to exactly what this screen will do we'll just hit OK and once we have that on there You'll notice that we do not have our common screen menu anymore so let's put that on and so we'll go to the properties here on screen 7 and we'll show uh, our background and our screen background screen is actually 100 which is our common and you'll see that actually come up on our screen here which looks good now we'll just turn it off because we're finished editing and we'll go back up to um, our common screen menu and hit screen select so we'll be able to actually select that screen go into screen and you'll see my meter graph here we'll just add that over to our current screen buttons and we'll just hit ok and we have that now set going back down to our meter graph screen we can now program in our uh, meters and graphs so if we look under the object list the first line the first one we do is we'll have a line trend graph now, just uh, for information, the meters are used to quickly see the values in the PLC and the format will, be, will give a visual interpretation of the data on the screen. Graphs are used to visually illustrate the relationships of the data on the HMI screen. Now this takes up less space and easier to describe the values with, other than with text alone. Now the control of these tags are done with the HMI panel and communicated to the PLC program through the PLC program. So if we take the line trend and we'll just grab the uh, default trend line and we'll drag that to our screen, we actually have our line trend graph um, come up our window. And with this, what we'll do is we'll um, go to our points on our graph and let's go change that instead of 10, let's put the 60 and our sample rate Let's change that to one second um, that we're going to be updating that. So we'll leave everything else the same. And then we'll go to, um, you'll see that we can change our X axis if we want or our Y axis uh, and uh, change the look and, and feel of uh, those uh, parameters. Then we'll look at our pens. And under our pen, what we can do is we can change. We have up to 16 of these pens onto our graph itself. So I have already pre-programmed in um, the pens. So here's my graph pen number one. And we'll leave it at uh, the color of black. We'll actually um, put a little thicker on the screen so we can see it. And we can have our uh, point style. So this actually, every point of the graph will actually contain a little zero or a round circle. And there are legend. What we'll do is we'll just call this WX0. Uh, so that's our PLC point that we're going to actually graph. And then, so point, uh, pen number two, we will put in and this one, we'll leave it as um, a red. Again, we'll change it to a fixed line and we'll put this as a triangle and WX1 and the third one that we'll put in is there we go and we'll leave it as a light green again we'll lose a darker color and we'll leave it as a square for our point style and that'll be a WX2 and then we can hit OK for, uh, we're OK for that pen. 
So we're going to put three pen marks and that's going to show us on our trend line. So under the option, now we have our visibility that we discussed last time. And we have um, our start and stop display. So we'll leave that on. And we have our clear. And we use a clear button. Now we can also use a clear tag if we like so we can control this by the PLC program. And then our buttons, we're going to display our scroll buttons. And you can we have a couple different options. We can use these arrows or those arrows. Um, we'll use the default in this case. And lastly, we have our time and date. So if we wanted to click this on, we can actually put our time and date of each point as we hit the graph. Okay. So everything else is, is left at default. We'll hit OK. Now we can, can position this onto our screen. And we'll just put it there and we'll make that a little larger. Um, probably be right around. That doesn't look too bad. So we'll leave it right there. So that is our line trend graph. Now let's look at our analog meter. And we'll again, what we'll do is take the default and put that onto our screen. And when we do that, you'll see that we now have the analog meter window displaying. And what we'll do is we'll change our, our display range to zero to 100. So that looks good our meter movements clockwise, it's a needle. This is all of our labeling information that we can um, change. We'll use that as default, our object style, style one, and our tag name, we'll call this, uh, we'll call up our tags here and select analog meter. And we've set this up previously as we did before. Then what we have is our alarm band and you can see our alarm band low we've set for static 20 so this is the um, blue portion here so we can change this to different numbers to represent the needle going into those areas and we have our low alarm which is set 40 our high alarm which is 60 and our high high alarm which is 80. so that looks good and under our options we have our visibility and then we have our scaling factor We'll turn that on and our PLC value actually goes from 0 to 4095 and this will um, uh, change here to uh, our display value 0 to 100. So then when we hit OK we can now proportion this onto our screen here and that looks pretty good there. So we'll leave it right there. Next we have our bar circle meter. And our bar circle meter, um, we will set this up. We'll use again the default and we'll drag that onto our screen. And these are just like the meters that you would actually put onto panels and they look great. So here, again, we'll leave everything as default. We'll call up our tag name which will be our bar circle meter. And our display range is zero to 100 again. Everything's left as default. Our option, we will turn on our scaling. And again, our PLC value zero to 4,095 will represent our display value of zero to 100. We'll hit okay. And now we position that onto our screen. That looks pretty good there. So we can play around with this a little bit more and change our fonts and make it look uh, exactly the way we want to. So we've ran out of room on this page, so let's start a new page. Um, screen number eight. And what we'll do is with this new page, we'll call this meter. Uh, graph 2 and again we can add a description we'll hit OK and again we'll turn on our common background which is right there 
and then we'll turn our our edit mode off we'll go back to um, our common screen menu hit select screen and we'll move our screen number eight over to our current buttons there we go and we'll go down to our screen number eight once again so now we're able to now add our next um, meter graph which is a PID faceplate now the PID faceplate stands for proportional integral derivative and this is only a faceplate so there's no control at all happening uh, in the HMI it's all done within the PLC and it's actually then pulling that data out and actually displaying it to you so this is only for uh, display purposes so what we'll do is take our default value our default and we'll put that up there and this is the bar um, the bar meter on the PID faceplate so here we have our bar meter and what we'll do is we will change um, let's see our we have options here we have our legends automatic manual which is good and the differences there All right, everything looks good we'll actually change our um, tags or put our tags in so our PV value or present value we will put as 505 which is our present value hit OK our set point or our set value We'll put there our output. We will set our output. And then we have our our bit mode. So our mode bit, which means our auto automatic or manual operation. We will um, put that in. And we have it programmed right here. And then our alarm bit, we will have programmed here at our 51, at MI51. And there we go. So that is our um, units and our range, 0 to 10 on our output. And under, under options, we have the visibility. So, so we have everything set now. We can hit OK. And we'll just put that up onto our screen and we'll make it a little larger. Drag it down. So we can see our set point here. And anytime if we want to actually um, review those settings we double click on it and we can see that right here so so we have number of divisions um, our output here mode so everything looks good and we'll just hit okay so it actually will display those values again in the plc and again the pid is in the plc not on the HMI and the HMI is just displaying this information to us. And then our last one on our meteor and graph will be our PID faceplate trend. And again, we'll take our default and we'll put that up on our screen. And here, what we'll do is we will look at our, our again, our tags. So we'll look at our present value, our set value. And our output. And our mode and alarm tags. We'll get those set. There's our mode indicating manual or auto. And our alarm. So that's all set. And so there's our legends and we'll leave everything as a default value or display. Then we'll look at our data and our time data rate. Let's change that down to one second. 
and we you notice we can also do as a trigger so we can actually determine when we're going to actually graph this onto our HMI. Then we have the points per chart. Let's change that to 30. And by doing so, it'll take 30 out 30 seconds in order to fill that chart. Our scaling and our y-axis will leave and our x-axis will all leave as a default. Then under option, again we have our visibility and we have our save log data, which is similar to our trend that we, we previously did. We can actually save this onto a USB or into the internal memory of our HMI unit. Then we have a start stop buttons that we will keep active. We have our clear button. And both of these buttons, we can actually use tag names instead in order to control this in the PLC. But in our case here, we'll just use it on the display screen itself. Then we have our scroll buttons that we can select. Again, same selections as we had in the trend. So then we hit OK. And we can actually then position this onto our screen. And now we can make it full width just like that so that looks pretty good so now we are complete in our design of our meters and graphs so let's do a simulation or quick simulation and we have an EA9 let's we'll start and here we go so the first thing we'll do is let's change it to something that's actually going to look like on our screen so that looks a little better and we can hit select screen we're going to meter graph and there we go right now so that's what's going to look like and we have our pens right here and we can assign this value here let's do say 2000 for that one so you see it goes right up to 2000 okay. and you'll notice here that we have forgot to actually put our y-axis in going up to 4095 so we'll have to change that so we'll change that before we actually download to our controller so we can find errors as we go along our our analog let's try that we'll put in um, 2000 again and that goes about 50 percent so which is correct we'll go to our bar graph again put in about 2000 and that's about 50 percent which is good then what we can do is select our screen, we'll go to our meter, and under these trends here, we can put in our, let's try um, 500. It looks about good. Try 500 here. And that looks good too. And you see my graphs here. These are all set, 500, 500. And then you'll notice we can also turn on our alarm. So that's manual now. You'll see manual here, manual over here. We can turn on the alarm. And you'll see the alarm setting here, alarm setting there. So that looks like it's functioning right. So let's just exit out of that. And we'll go back to our trend graph. And we're gonna change that um, scaling from zero to 4095 hit OK and you see my scale is now up there so that's uh, that's a good way of using simulation before we actually transfer it to our unit in order to um, get it working so now let's transfer this over to our unit our actual uh, HMI so Let's hit our send and we will use Ethernet communication and we'll transfer that now. We will save the changes, yes. And now it's transferring it over. And there we go. So our program now is into our controller close this down and now let's look at our PLC program so here we go and we've added a few lines uh, more to our pro program in order to accommodate for our trend 
So on our pen one, two, and three on our trend graph, what we will do is we will move WX0, one, and two into our uh, MHR registers in order for it to display on the graph. Then we have our analog meter, which takes WX3 and puts it in the MHR503, which then displays your analog meter. Then we have our bar and circle meter, which we use WX4 into M MHR504. Then we have our PID faceplate, both the bar and the trend, and we move WX5, 6, and 7 into the corresponding MHR505, 505, 506, 507, just like we did with the simulation there. And then we have our two bits that show my mode bit, manual or auto, and then we have our alarm bit for our faceplate. So that is the modifications that we did for our meters and graphs. So let's call up our do more simulator and it's right here. So we are currently in run mode and we will actually select our screen and go to our meter graph and let's try out. So this is pen number one. So let's just move it up to oh, about a thousand here and you can actually see it on the graph right here coming in. Again, each point that's showing shows that circle for us and it's in black. Next, what we'll do is take pen number two. We'll give it a little bit now. And it comes in red and you'll see the triangle. We can now shoot it up a little past the, period, the, the next one. You see it a little better. And you see it, we did it every second. And we have 60 seconds, so we have a minute of data of work, working on our screen or looking at our screen. Then we have our third pen, which is going to be the light green. And it will be displayed for us. And we, as we move this slider switch, we can actually see it onto our display screen. So that looks like it's working well. And that was the modification we did uh, and caused us uh, in our simulator to pick up an error that we had. Then we had WX3, which is our um, analog meter. And as you see, as I move this analog meter up to full, it goes up to 100%. And we can go back down anywhere we want. So that seems to work well. Then we have our bar meter and our bar fills up and down. So you can see it's very easy to actually simulate and look at the values within that controller. So let's look at our PID base plates. And here they are here. So the last three is my set value, present value, and my output. So let's go and give it some value here so you can see how I go up and I can see my present value then my set value I can change it and it will actually go up in the bar, bar, bar graph as well as you'll notice on my um, chart here you're actually charting this and showing exactly what happened over the last little while then you see my output my last one here I can actually change the output and you can see it going up and down with the value that I, I want. So you notice the buttons we have up here, we can hit stop, we can clear that, we can start it again and monitor those values as we go up and down. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want to get our two free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. 
Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.